we await the next great reset. Most of you have been primarily concerned with when the next solar flash will occur. When will the magnetic reversal complete its flip? And who can blame you? But for me, I see the trials beginning long before the zenith of the sun's assault on Terra, likely years before. And in our video timing the magnetic reversal, we remarked that things will likely get bad long before the field bottoms out, maybe 50%, 30%, 60% strength. We just don't know. So for me, the question is when is the breaking point, the tipping point, and what lands the blow? One potential answer is that the sun will unleash a major solar flare, perhaps this coming sunspot cycle, and the induced current will take out the world's power, literally melting the grids, burning hardware, and sending us back to the dark ages. But another potential assailant is the weather. And here's where the complex climate science that we've been covering for years comes in. And true enough, this textbook is sold out until the third edition is released summer 2020. But we will be doing a number of solar climate forcing mechanism review videos in the new year, showing exactly how the sun accomplishes its forcing. But here on the last day of 2019, you will have to settle for a mostly macro scale qualitative description of the peer reviewed studies. Now these are going to be in the context of Earth's magnetic reversal and therefore greater solar forcing capability with a weaker Earth's magnetic shield. But you can also extremify what we're about to say for the big event itself. The primary effects are due to the cosmic ray and solar particle effect on the atmosphere and ionosphere, which strongly affects the global electric circuit, wind, surface pressure and clouds, and directly interacts with the large-scale atmospheric flows at the tops of their respective circuits. With a weaker magnetosphere, the sun's most notable effects will begin by intensifying the upper-level winds, and this will allow for more dynamic activity below which will be aided by the added particle bombardment of the ionosphere and atmosphere. This means that the electrification amplification to the atmospheric electric circuit is tied to the strength of Earth's magnetic field in addition to the ambient space weather itself. The additions to the global electric circuit intensify the pressure cells. This means lower low pressure, higher high pressure, which brings stronger surface winds, storms, temperature swings, and flooding events. The first two here work together to basically take all the weather you already experience in your region and amplify it. Stronger storms, colder cold, hotter hot, drier dry, you get the picture. So, you have to ask yourself, what is the toughest part of my year weather-wise? Is it tornado season? It will get worse. Is it drought and wildfires, heat and UV skin damage? they will get worse. The winter cold, it will get worse. And all of this sentenced to be exacerbated by the electrodynamic cloud microphysical effects of those particles. They not only deposit charged potential condensation nuclei components into the atmosphere, but they electrify the ambient air particles already there, making for a situation where you have dust, water vapor, and the charged particles all inspired to mingle. The studies on cosmic rays and lightning are numerous, convincing, and lead the imagination to a very scary place here. They play a role in hail as well, which nobody wants to see get worse, and their overall cloud amplification processes will contribute to those cold swings by blocking sunlight and increasing snowfall. And so, you have two jobs when it comes to the analysis of your location, and obviously, this is something everyone has to do for themselves. First, ask yourself what kind of weather you endure already. So for that region I identified in the southeast portion of Australia yesterday as being great for a continental sized wave, might not be so great when you consider the worst wildfires in summer and colder cold on those peaks that will allow you to watch the waters crash through the valleys below. Cave isn't looking too bad in that region now, is it? So what about Europe? The breakdown of the oceanic currents that make Europe temperate has already started to a degree, and the hotter hots affect the Arctic dumping fresh water into the oceans to disrupt that engine is not helping one bit. All of a sudden, Turkey is sounding a bit better than Wales, not only because it won't be as cold, but because they indeed have a ton of subterranean survival areas more than 12,000 years old, a likely safe zone overall. And with this focus on the weather, 
This is quite obviously why I left out Canada in the Great Wave Safe Zone video yesterday. The Rockies will protect what they protect. It is too bad that the west coast of Canada will always be temperate due to the Pacific because anything there now will be completely obliterated by a great wave. The U.S.-Canada border, lower elevations of the Rockies, are begging the Pacific to break through the Rockies at that point, and then the entire lowlands is in trouble north and south of the border. But of course, in this weather video, who doesn't know Canada's main problem, the cold and snow? Natives do not consider it a problem at all, and indeed, their thriving there year-round is incredible. But what if it's worse? You know, the no-travel order issued in Minnesota this last week during the blizzard should really serve as a thinking point for many. What happens if it's worse and lasts longer, and it was colder to start with, and it's a week of no-travel order? What happens when the wind and ice and snow takes out the power as the temperature drops? I suppose more Canadians have proper fireplaces than Americans, but still. What happens when your summer break is marred by worse thunderstorms, more tornadoes, worse flooding, or drought? I basically had the USA and Canada to choose from for my family, and we moved to the new valley of the sun for a very good reason. I just don't want to freeze. Now, lastly, you need to think about how ENSO, El Nino, and La Nina affect your part of the world and recognize that more extreme swings in those are likely. This is your second job. If your region is equally affected by the North Atlantic Oscillation or the monsoon season, for example, those are equally extremified. Stronger monsoons, for example, have more variable placement and harsher drought for the regions missed. So half of this is about knowing that great waves have rocked this world before. The other half is remembering that the weather happens every day, not just once every 12,000 years. The field is fading and things are going to get bad long before the big show.